It's rare enough for a Canadian university player to make it to the NFL. But add to that, Duvenet Tardif was earning his medical degree at McGill. And then last year, he won a Super Bowl championship ring before one more twist, putting his athletic career on hold. I think it's serious. There's a lot of simi similarity between that and SARS. Duvenet Tardif, who hasn't yet received his medical license, came back to Canada to work as an orderly in a long-term care home, helping patients struggling with COVID. It's really a, a, an unbelievable feeling. And that helped propel him to being the co-winner of the 2020 Lou Marsh Trophy as Canada's Athlete of the Year. Laurent, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Tell me what the last few months have been like for you and, and your, your development as a, as a medical person. It's been interesting, that's for sure. You know, a year ago, we were just coming off a Super Bowl win in Kansas City. And for me, you know, the Super Bowl was kind of the last time we were able to gather, uh, not only in Miami, but also in Kansas City with over a million people at the parade. And then going from that to you know, going back at the front line in my hometown in Montreal and then, you know, opting out of the season. So there, there's been quite a lot going on this year. Uh, but, but, you know, at the, at the end of the day, uh, that's what you learn from 2020 is that we need to adapt. You've told this story many times before, but for the people who are watching who may not know, why did you decide to walk away, at least for a while, from football to go into a long-term care facility? Well, three months after playing in the Super Bowl, uh, I went back and helped on the front line uh, for like 10 weeks. And I think I saw firsthand the burden and the impact of COVID, um, not only on the patient, but even maybe more so on my colleagues, you know, how the healthcare professionals and their families and the amount of sacrifice. And I think for me, at that point, it just didn't make sense to cross the border uh, to go play a sport that I love, but also, you know, traveling every second week into a different city and potentially exposing myself, but also uh, communities around me. And, and you know, I'm, I'm going to be a, a physician for the rest of my life down the road. So I think it was important for me to, to follow my conviction and to err on the side of cautious for this year. You were working as an orderly. That's the way I've seen it described over the last few months. And, and, and I just wonder if there's a moment or a person you encountered that you could tell us about that would help us better understand the COVID crisis in Canada? I mean, in long-term care, the long-term care facility were, were really badly affected by, by COVID. You know, over the course of the last year, the place that I work at experienced three different outbreaks. Um, we lost uh, a lot of patients and you know, for me, I first went in there with really the mindset of a medical student trying to optimize everything, uh, you know, balance the medication. And at some point I kind of realized, you know, that this is this is bigger than us, you know, and those people, those elderly, they're probably not going to go home and it's either going to be COVID or something else. And, and I think that's kind of at that point that I realized that the most important thing is is the human interaction you know is the comfort is to make sure that these people preserve their dignity and i feel like at, at the beginning uh you, you know you're intimidated by the ppe the visor the mask the gown and, and you lose that you know that the importance of interacting with your patient and, and i feel like working in those long-term care facility uh working with other orderly who spend so much time with the patient nurses that are so dedicated to what they do, um, I learned that. And to me, that's really the difference between treating somebody and, and caring for somebody. Do you think it's gonna make you a, a different kind of doctor now? No doubt. You know, in medicine, you, you keep talking about the art of medicine. Well, I think it comes with interacting with not only your patient, but also asking questions, you know, asking questions to the orderly, to the nurses who spend the most time with them and that gives you better care at the end of the day. And that's what you want, you know? Uh, so for sure, my experience in long-term care facility, even though I was only there for two to three days a week, is going to change my, you know, perspective as a future physician, I'm sure. Football players at the highest level, which is where you were, have a very limited amount of time to play at that level. Did you do the right thing, stepping away for a year? 
Uh, I mean, opting out of the 2020 season was uh, for sure the hardest decision I've ever had to make. Um, am I in peace with it? Yes. Uh, does it come with a little bit of regret sometime? Of course, otherwise it wouldn't be a hard decision, you know, but I feel like back then, you know, if I put myself back in, in last July, we didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, we didn't know how effective the, the protocols in the NFL were going to be. And I think for me, it was important to err on the side of cautious because uh, 10 years from now, five years from now, I want to be able to look at myself in the mirror and be like, I, I follow my conviction and my value. And that's what I did. I'm in peace with my decision, but watching the Super Bowl is for sure going to be hard for me. What's it going to take for you to get back into the NFL? Because I've read that, that that's what you want to do. But to go from the life you're living right now back to that very tough, brutally physical league, uh, what's it going to take? I, it's going to take it for sure a lot of determination uh, and, and that's what I try to do right now. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty for sure when it comes to playing next year because, I mean, you know, NFL is a business. There's always other guys that are coming from college that are healthier, cheaper, uh, better than you. So you always got to prove yourself. But I feel like right now, you know, the only thing I can really control is make sure that I show up in Kansas City in the best shape possible next year. So that's that's what I'm working on. You know, I try not to get too anxious with what happened if this or if the, the, the pandemic is still with us come next September. Like I try to just focus on making sure that I show up next July in Kansas City in the best physical shape possible. A lot of Canadians, as you know, are going to be watching the Super Bowl. But this year, health officials are telling them, you know, from the East Coast to the West Coast, don't have a party. Don't gather with people because of COVID. You're in a unique position to, to answer this question. What do you say to people who are watching, who are planning to... To, to break those rules, to say, you know what, doesn't really matter. I'll get together, have a party this Sunday, despite COVID. You know, I, I, I feel like after all those sacrifices we made, you know, after all the work that all those healthcare workers put on the front line for us, all the sacrifices, it, it's really the least we can do. You know, let's just follow the public health measures in place and, and let's try to go through this. You know, um, when I work in the long term care facility, uh, everybody's doing everything they can to protect themselves, but also to protect the patients. But at the end of the day, we're still seeing outbreaks. Why? Because of one little mistake. Like this virus is so contagious. Like I feel like we got to do everything we can. And, and I know there's a lot of hope with the vaccine and everything. But at the end of the day, the best thing we can do right now is still to wash our hands, put a mask and stay home. There's so much, Laurent, about you and your life that is remarkable, especially what's happened over the last year. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And go Chiefs. <laughs>